Before we get into this content, I ask that you please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy it. I really love hearing from you in the comment section, and it means a lot to me when you like and subscribe. We just recently passed 100 subscribers, and I was over the moon. I cannot wait to see where we go from here. All right, battlers, welcome back to a brand new video. This is my Tampa Bay Sinister Cup recap. So the tournament was held October 20th at Next Ridge Games. Shout out to those guys for always being such gracious hosts. I had a great time. It was actually a six rounder. We got 33 participants, so it was a ton of fun. I went four and two, and let's get right into those battles. In round one, my opponent is Gartos. Gartos' team kind of discourages fighters with the Driftblim, Medicham, Claydol, and Alola Marowak. I'm actually going to lead with Haunter because it beats three of his Pokemon and can win against the Steelix and the Polyrath in certain shielding situations. So I'm going in with Haunter, Mawile, and Gardevoir. Let's see how we do. These first round games, I always have such jitters. We're actually gonna lead into that Polyrath here. So this is not a terrible matchup for us, but I actually do make a pretty huge mistake here. Thinking it might be a power punch, I don't shield, and the ice punch does a huge amount of damage to us. And then I go ahead and I reveal my second move. A lot of people think that Haunter, uh, when you see it, it'll be bringing Shadow Ball, but mine was actually bringing Dark Pulse. So I made a huge mistake by revealing my second move and not shielding the ice punch. I'm already in a hole. I come in here with Gardevoir and we're able to charm down the Polyrath, but but he does still have two healthy Pokemon, one of them being the Steelix. So as I mentioned in the team composition, his team really discouraged fighters, but I needed to bring something to deal with that Steelix, and unfortunately I don't really have an answer on this team. I actually fire off the Synchronoise, hoping that he would shield it. Uh, Synchronoise takes one turn less than Shadow Ball. I should have just gone for the Shadow Ball there. That was another mistake I made. He's gonna fire off the Earthquake and finish us off. I'm actually gonna bring in Mawile here and bring this match closer than I thought I would. In comes Alola Marowak, but it's a Fire Spin variant. So I do use my Power Up Punch here, and I'm gonna bring this Marowak as low as I can, but I know that one Bone Club will finish us off. We actually bring this match a little bit closer than I thought, but he actually uses the Shadow Ball to finish us off, and we lose game one. Going into game two, I'm going to leave with Haunter again with Polyrath and Gardevoir. I'm going to try to remedy that fighterless team composition that I had in the last game. We lead into that Polyrath again. I'm going to try to play this matchup a little bit better. I go straight for that Shadow Punch here to try to put some pressure on the Polyrath. He does not shield. He's actually going to go for a charge move, move of his own, so I am going to shield that this time. Look at me go. I'm going to fire off a Shadow Punch here against Haunter, or against Polyrath again. He does decide to shield, so he's going to want to hold on to this Polyrath. My Haunter has such low health, I'm actually not going to shield it here and let it fall. I decided to bring in my Polyrath, hoping that he would bring out his Polyrath counter, and then I could swap into something different and hopefully lock him in. But Alola Marowak comes out, and this is actually a great situation for me. In my Ghost Stadium team, I was using Empoleon in Polyrath's place, but I found that Empoleon's weakness to this new fire spin, Alola Marowak, really put it behind. So I decided to bring Polyrath, and with the Power Punch, Ice Punch moveset, I'm actually just trying to bubble down this Alola Marowak as fast as I can. We do shield the Shadow Ball, which is an, a good move by us. He is gonna block the Power Punch, which is a curious move by him. He really wants another charge move and it is the shadow ball but we do barely survive it in comes steelix though and this is not great for us we know that all he needs is the earthquake to finish us off so again gardevoir against the steelix is how we end the second match um he does use the earthquake here i'm gonna get a shadow ball to bring this match a little bit closer on paper but this was a pretty clear win for gartos here in round two as you can see there, maybe one or two more charms would have done the trick. Gardevoir super resists that Dragon Tail, so you really need to expend energy when you use Steelix. Going to round three, I'm gonna lead Gardevoir with Polyrath and Haunter in the back. So the same three, we're just gonna change it up. I lead here into Drift Blim. I wanna do a quick shout out to For the Battles because she did a great video on Breakpoints and Gardevoir and Drift Blim's matchup. I will leave that link in the description below. I'm actually going to swap here in a Haunter and then we're gonna run into that Steelix. I'm gonna go straight for the Dark Pulse here, trying to output as much damage as possible. Uh, he does not shield it, so it does take uh, maybe 30% of the Steelix's health. I'm not gonna shield Haunter here. I had that Steelix in the position where I want it. So I'm actually going to decide to bring in my Polyrath. Use a few bubbles here. I'm gonna to try to boost up the, the bubbles quickly as I can. He only did four Dragon Tails, so I know this is a crunch. I'm actually gonna bubble down that Steelix there and I've got some energy. I do use the Power Up Punch here against the Metacham. 
This is a bit of a tricky situation because I know that as soon as I switch, he is going to switch. So I need to figure out a way to put pressure on this meta jam and also uh, make sure that I'm set in the back. So I do fire off the ice punch here to try to take this shield and we do. I've got enough energy for a second boosted ice punch. So let's see if he lets us one through and he does. Meta Cham is getting a little bit weak. I'm actually gonna swap into Gardevoir and charm him down so quickly that he's not able to switch. In comes Drift Blim and one charm wins us that. So it's a moral victory, but we won game three. My next opponent is PS239 Riverboy. PS239 Riverboy actually scrims with Atticus and several other really prominent YouTubers. He's an awesome trainer and nobody to take lightly. He is going to bring Cresselia, Metacham, Mawile, Driftblim, and Dust Noir. For my team, I see two lead opportunities here in Bastidon and Mawile. I'm actually going to choose to lead Bastidon because of the Mawile mirror match. I'm not, not exactly comfortable doing that one if I can avoid it. And here we go. Round two, game one against PS239. I'm going to lead with the Bastiodon with Haunter and Polyrath in the back. He leads Cresselia, so this is a great matchup for me. I am very comfortable here. I actually am going to fire off a few smackdowns, and in comes his Mawile. Uh, still have early tournament shakes, but I was able to actually get to the Polyrath. I was going to kick myself if I picked Haunter there. So he made the right switch into Polyrath. I'm just going to ramp up these bubbles so that whatever comes in next is going to get a boosted Polyrath to deal with. He actually is going to get off a charge move here at the end. I figure it's a Hail Mary, play rough, and it is. So I do decide to shield that, preserving my Polyrath. In comes that Confusion Chrysalia, but luckily for us, we have double boosted Ice Punches, and we're going to try to do as much hurt to this Chrysalia as we can. We actually get a second Ice Punch off, which is excellent for us. Feeling very confident. We do take that shield, so it's one shield versus one shield. I'm not going to bring in Haunter because it would melt. I decided to bring in Bastidon. As you see here, the Aurora Beam does about as much as the Shadow Punch, which is great for us. We force that Meta Cham out, and that Meta Cham is pinned against the hardest wall in the meta, maybe outside of Alola Marowak, in Haunter. So he is going to fire off an attack here. It is a Psychic. He knew that was his only shot, and he took it. I do use my last shield to defend against it. One more Shadow Punch will bring down Metacham. In comes Cresselia, and we're actually going to get to another Shadow Punch here to finish it off and win game one. Jumping into game two, I decide to lead with Gardevoir. I've got Haunter and Polyrath in the back. Let's see how we do. So I am in a neutral position here. This Dusk Noir is something I had not practiced against. I'm not even familiar with its moves, but as you can see, Charm is just eating this thing up. I'm actually going to defend my Gardevoir, confident that he couldn't get off a second charge move. I'm going to bail out in favor of Haunter here, and we're going to go here for the Shadow Punch against the Shiny Drift Blim. PS239 told me that he's running an all-shiny team for fun. His weighted cup was later in the month, so I'm... Uh, so he is an excellent player, but this was obviously just for fun for him. I am going to charm down that Drift Blim and then use the Shadow Ball against the Steelix. He actually is not going to shield that, so it does do good damage. And again, our Gardevoir is so stout against the Dragon Tails, we actually almost get to another move. I hesitate and try to go for the Shadow Punch, and it doesn't, or excuse me, Shadow Ball, and it doesn't work out. In comes Steelix, and then back in Dust Noir, but my bubble erases it. He said he had a Psychic loaded, but my fast move animation registered before his charge move. So I got lucky there. He would have nuked my Polyrath for sure. In comes a Crunch from Steelix, and this match is all but wrapped up. Taking a look at round three, I decide to lead with Mawile. I've got Haunter and Polyrath behind it. Here comes Mawile against Dust Noir, and this is an excellent matchup for us. I found out later his moves were Ominous Wind and Psychic, so I'm very comfortable. In comes his Mawile, and I've got a great answer in Polyrath. So we saw this a few minutes earlier. We know how this one is going to go. I do need to watch out for the play rough, and I'll be bummed if he shield baits me, but if not, it's okay. I actually use a couple more bubbles to bring it down. In comes that Dust Noir, and we're going straight for these Ice Punches. We take that first shield from Dust Noir. I'm just trying to put as much pressure on it as I can. I actually get to a second Ice Punch here. 
and this is great news for us, we take that second shield as well. So we have two shields and three Pokemon versus no shields and two Pokemon. I let this move through. I was expecting Psychic, but it's actually Ominous Wind. He makes a perfect switch though into Drift Limb, catching my Power Up Punch as opposed to the Ice Punch. I'm actually going to bring in Haunter here, and with two shields, I'm pretty confident that Haunter can wrap up this game. He does release all of his energy in the form of the Shadow Ball, and the Shadow Claws are enough to bring him down. I'm actually going to reveal my Dark Pulse to him on the last move of the game right here to finish off Dust Noir. GG's PS239. My next opponent is Ryguy. Ryan is running Poliwrath, Mawile, Alolan Marowak, Driftblim, Claydol, and Metacham. For game one, I decide to lead with Poliwrath. I have Gardevoir and Haunter in the back. So we end up leading Poliwrath into that Mawile. That's great for us because the two things I didn't want to lead into were Claydol and Driftblim. He switches out into Metacham and I answer with Haunter. So this is a good matchup for us. I figure that he's going to go here for the Psychic and he does. So we actually end up shielding that and I'm going to Shadow Claw him down. I know he's getting very close to another Psychic so I'm going to use this Shadow Punch to avoid having to burn our shield and put him in a position where he ne either needs to sacrifice the uh, Metacham or his shield. Metacham falls, in comes the Mawile. I hit, I hit it with the Dark Pulse there and then fire off the Shadow Punch to finish it off. So he's got two shields and Alola Marowak. This is actually not a terrible situation for me at all. I debate things and see if I want to bring in Gardevoir first to do as much chip damage as possible, but I go straight for the Poliwrath here. He's actually going to shield that, that, that attack there, probably expecting a Hydro Pump or something, uh, but it's just a Power Punch. I do bail out into Gardevoir and use my Gardevoir as a, a third shield or second shield excuse me I bring back in the Poliwrath here and we're going to keep on using these bubbles. So we absorb the Shadow Ball threat from the Marowak and it's very low. So I'm not very concerned here. I do decide to shield. It is Bone Club, but we wrap this match up nicely. Jumping into round two against Ryan, I decide to lead with Mawile. I have Poliwrath and Haunter in the back. I'm hoping to run into Claydol, uh, but the uh, Alola Marowak will do. It is a Fire Spin variant, so I will stay in here for a moment. I'm going to try and do as much damage as I can. I am going to shield this Bone Club to keep my Mawile healthy and then bring in the Poliwrath. So he comes in with Metacham, and the strategy here is to go for straight Ice Punches to do as much damage as you possibly can to the Metacham. I'm able to get off one before he fires off a charge move. It is psychic and he does catch us there. I do have a shield and haunter though, so I'm gonna bring in my haunter to try to finish off this Metacham. Again, trying to put him in a position where he either needs to spend all of his energy or spend a shield. In comes that Mawile and this is not great for us. I am going to fire off the Shadow Punch and bail out quickly into my own Mawile. And before Ryan can switch, I actually catch him with a Power Up Punch here. So that goes through unshielded and we bite down the Mawile. I do have a boosted Mawile now and in comes that Fire Spin Alola Marowak from earlier. I'm actually going to shield this Bone Club here to keep Mawile around and a few more bites will do the trick. Going into round three against Ryan, I decide to leave with Gardevoir. I have Metacham and Haunter in the back. Just trying to switch up the flow a little bit here and give him a different look. We actually lead into that Claydol, which is a positive matchup for Gardevoir, just because the confusion takes so long to charge. Things do look pretty even until you start to look at those charms adding up. That Claydol bails out and he goes into Metacham, which proves to me that he doesn't have a better answer or maybe it was a uh, mistake on the switch. I'm going to preserve that Gardevoir because I know that the confusions will melt this Haunter. So I am going to bring in Haunter, shield the Psychic, and then Shadow Claw down the Metacham. In comes that Claydol with a ton of energy. That's okay. I actually decide to shield Haunter here. With the additional energy that I've gained, I think I can Shadow Punch it down. We do take that shield and then get to another Shadow Punch before the Confusion can even register. So that just shows you how fast Haunter can be. When you use it against Confusion users, you really have to outspeed, outpace your opponent. In comes that Poliwrath and at this point, I'm just going to do as much damage as I can. I do fire off the Dark Pulse because the shields are down. And I know I have my Gardevoir in the back in case I need to take him down. Plus the healthy Metacham. He does go for the Power Up Punch there and he is bubbling me down. He's going to go for one more charge move and Haunter is going to barely hold on for the Shadow Punch. Shadow Punch seals the deal and we beat Ryan. GG's as always, my friend. My next opponent is Harris Leader. Harris does have Probopass on his team, which is an interesting look. 
Uh, these matches are pretty close and very exciting. I'm gonna lead with Gardevoir with Medicham and Haunter in the back. I'm crossing my fingers that he doesn't lead with Robopass, and he does. So this is obviously a bad situation for us. I'm gonna switch into my only fighter on the team, which is Medicham. I think Harris uh, made a little bit of an error here by staying in as late as he did. I know he's trying to get energy for Probopass, but it's a very expensive way to do it when you have Medicham just beating it down with those counters. I go straight for the Psychic here against Claydol, and this isn't a, a very good situation for us, but I do realize now that my Medicham is key, so I am going to shield it here and then start boosting up these counters. My goal is to run into that Probo Pass again and actually beat it down with boosted counters. I switch into Gardevoir there and we use a couple of charms to bring down Claydol. Back in comes the Probo Pass and the Rock Slide is going to hurt. I'm not going to invest much in this Gardevoir. It's a bit of a sacrificial swap. I just need to move around the board position in order to get an advantage here. So I do bring in the Metacham and the counters do the trick. Probopass falls, then in comes Alolan Marowak. So this is a Fire Spin variant. I'm gonna go here for the Power Up Punch, trying to draw the shield from Harris, and I don't get it. So I go for another Power Up Punch here, again, trying to psych him out, trying to get the shield, and we don't get it a second time. He fire spins us down and he's got a ton of energy so this is actually not a very good situation for us. Haunter is so squishy against the Bone Club that uh, one will bring us down. I am going to fire off the Shadow Punch here but I know he's got a ton of energy and it is a race to the finish. He actually has enough for another charge move which is Shadow Ball so Harris takes game one. I'm going to lead here with the Polyrath. I have Gardevoir and Haunter in the back. Now in this situation against something like a Probo Pass. I do have to watch out for the Thunderbolt with Polyrath, but I like the bubble damage against the ground type Claydol as well, so it's kind of a flex move. We'll see if it pays off. He does switch out of Claydol into Probo Pass, so he's going to catch my Gardevoir. The difference here is that I'm going to get the Shadow Ball off, and he does decide to shield it, so we do earn that first shield from Harris. He's going to use the Rock Slide, and then a few more Sparks will bring us down. He's already got three, maybe four Sparks saved up, so I know I'm going to have to shield my Polyrath when I bring it in. Fire off a few bubbles here, trying to get to the Power Up Punch, and we have to shield that Thunderbolt, so I'm actually going to uh, fire off the Power Up Punch here to boost these bubbles. I was waiting for the swap, but it didn't happen, so I'm just going to double down on Polyrath. We get really lucky, and we're able to feign him down before he gets up another charge move. In comes Claydol, and I think Harris makes a mistake here not blocking the Ice Punch. I know in the lead up to this cup, there was a lot of debate about what moveset your Polyrath should have and I decided to go Power Up Punch, Ice Punch, and Bubble, as you've seen, but you never know. It could be Dynamic Punch, it could be Hydro Pump. I think King even did a video where one trainer was running Submission. I mean, it's really wild out here, guys. So I'm in a situation now where I can bubble down this Lola Marowak with all this energy that I've gained. He does lag a little bit there, but he comes right back online. We're able to Shadow Claw him down for the win. Going to the final round against Harris, something in my gut told me to lead Metacham. So I'm going to lead Metacham with Gardevoir and Haunter, and guys, it pays off for us perfectly. He leads that trusty Probo Pass right into that Metacham. In comes Alola Marowak, and I make the swap here in a Haunter. So Haunter is going to get that Shadow Claw lightning fast. We do fire it off and draw that first shield, and we sneak in the Shadow Claw there. If you have not seen King's video about uh, under tapping 2.0, you need to check that out because when your opponent fires off those charge moves, if you're beating the screen f quickly enough, fast enough, you can get off an extra move and it really makes a difference in the long run. That Claydol comes in though and melts us with confusion, but I'm in a great position. I know I can defeat this Claydol with the charms if I need to, and I'm going to spend my only shield on, on Gardevoir, I've already decided, because these Probo Pass attacks won't do much. He does swap out into Probo Pass and I've got him up against a wall. We're going to take that Rock Slide like a champ, no problem at all, and counter down the Probo Pass. In comes the Claydol, and I'm going to go straight for the Psychic. I do miss one bubble, but still get the excellent. And he's going to get a charge move off on us. Again, I know I'm going to save that shield for Gardevoir, but we actually don't even need it. GG's, Harris. My next opponent is a trainer that hails from Orlando. He is TRMRHL. So he's going to be bringing 
Bastiodon, Claydol, Metacham, Dusclops, Steelix, and Haunter. So this team really uh, frightened me because that Dusclops I've been struggling against in practice, especially with my team. So I'm very concerned about him running Dusclops here. Uh, my only super hard counter would be the Bastiodon, or I could bring Haunter, but I have to give it shields. So this is a very uh, tedious situation for me. I have to watch out for the Fire Punch, especially when it comes to Mawile. And, uh, you know, it could be Feint Attack, and it could flip the entire matchup as well with that move. So let's get into the battles. For round one against TRM, I'm going to lead with Polyrath. I've got Gardevoir and Mawile in the back. We jump right into the lead situation here with Polyrath into Haunter. So we've seen this uh, in the reverse on a previous match. It's kind of a toss up depending on how you play the shields. I do decide not to block that Shadow Punch and I go for the bait here with the Power Up Punch. We actually do get the shield which is which is exactly what I wanted. I make an aggressive swap into Mawile to try to catch this Haunter. We do absorb the Shadow Punch. In comes the Metacham. So this Mawile is pretty much sacrificed. I'm going to do as much damage to Metacham though as I can. And I'm again trying to move his Pokemon around where I want them to be so I can get an advantage. I do let that switch timer tick down and I bring in the Gardevoir. This is going to be super effective work against him. I do expect the Psychic here and that is what we get so I do shield. Gardevoir is able to charm down Metacham, and we're waiting for whatever he has next, which is Claydol. So again, another winning matchup for our Gardevoir, especially with an energy lead like we have. So I do fire up the Synchro Noise to try to get the shield, and we do. So we are one turn ahead, essentially, of the Shadow Ball, which is nice. I do make the Fast Swap into Polyrath to absorb that Earth Power and use it as another shield. I'm going to ride the Gardevoir bus all the way to the win here. With one charm, we bring down the Haunter. Jumping into round two, I do decide to lead off with the Mawile and we catch Haunter, which is great for us. I'm going to bite a few times before he swaps out. In comes the Metacham, and this is a little bit rough. We're going into a Metacham mirror match. He got seven counters, so I'm expecting the Psychic, and it is. I do build up to a Psychic and then go for the Power Up Punch bait. Let's see if he takes it. And he does. So we actually do earn that shield off of him. I am going to go for the Psychic here. I assume he's going to go for it as well. This is a very pivotal pivotal matchup in our game here. I know whoever wins this mirror match is probably going to win the game. I actually try to go for the bait again, but we don't get it. I'm going to go for a Psychic here to try to one-shot this Metacham at the end, and we do exactly that. So in comes Haunter, but the switch timer is ticked down, so I make a really aggressive swap back into Mawile, and we catch the Haunter. We're going to take that Shadow Punch, no problem, and in comes the Dusclops. I actually go for the Hail Mary Play Rough. Let's see what happens, and it lands. That was a huge determining factor for this game. We're actually able to bite down the Dusclops, and then in comes Bastiodon, and we are safe. Going to the final round, I do decide to open with Metacham. I have Mawile and Gardevoir behind it. We get an unfavorable lead here with the Dusclops, and I know this is going to be a hard game for us to win. He is going to go here for the Fire Punch, and knowing that it will do almost half of Mawile's health, I do decide to shield. In comes the Metacham, and I consider going for the Play Rough Hail Mary, but I already tried that trick once. I should have built up to the Play Rough, though, in order to potentially draw the shield but that was my mistake there he does fire off the dynamic punch so i know that his metacham is running dynamic punch and psychic i do bring in my gardevoir here and four charms will do the trick he's gonna let the switch timer tick down in comes the dusclops he's got two shields though so this is a very uphill battle for us i'm hoping that i can bring down the dusclops with gardevoir and then use uh, my Metacham to beat his Steel type in the back if he has one, but he actually gets to the Shadow Punch because I over farm. So I'm going to bring in my Metacham here. My only hope, because he has two shields, is to build up these counters to a point where I can counter down the Dusclops, because I know that I'm not going to get a Psychic through. It's just going to be too tough for me. He is going to shield the Power Up Punch here to keep his Steelix a little bit more topped off and get the Earthquake. Our Metacham does survive, and then we have a Power Up Punch ready, so I'm gonna put it all into these last counters to see if we can win it. He does shield it, and then one more Hex does us in. This is it, Battlers. We are in the final round of my Sinister Cup recap. We are facing off against the famous Linden Ryu. 
season one ace, uh, mentor, friend, battler, rival, whatever you want to call him. This guy has it going on. He's going to be bringing Haunter, Probopass, Alola Marowak, Metacham, Polyrath, and Steelix. So already looking at his team, you have the most oppressive ghost in the meta with Haunter. He does have Probo Pass, so that Thunderbolt offers him some coverage against those opposing Polyraths. He does have a Lola Marowak, and now the question boils down to Fire Spin or Hex and that will uh, determine a lot for this matchup as well. And then he's got double fighters in Metacham and Polyrath. Metacham's moveset is up for debate to a degree. Uh, a lot of folks have been running Psychic. We did see Dynamic Punch in the last round, but Ice Punch is also a, a potential move. And then Polyrath, of course, the question is legacy or non-legacy. Mudshot versus Bubble. Also, uh, he's got a ton of moves, Dynamic Punch. Hydro Pump and Ice Punch as well as Power Punch that he could be running. And then the Steelix in the back. So he does have the Sap Core, Marowak, Polyrath, and Steelix, and then some really complimentary pieces. So let's see how these games go. All right, battlers, let's go to round one. Polyrath, Haunter, Metacham, double fighters for the first time in this whole cup. These games are extremely close. I'm gonna try to go through all the different micro decisions that influence the outcome. So in comes that Lola Marowak, and we learn right off of the bat that that is a fire spin. So this is favorable for me. I'm gonna try to build up these bubbles because this is exactly what I want. He's actually going to stay in with the Marowak and get off a charge move. He did get several fire spins here, so I do decide to shield. Super aggressive move going straight for the Shadow Ball, but we guessed right. I'm gonna do another power up punch here, and because he's so far behind in energy, he's really gonna pay for it. I do have a third power up punch ready to go, and we release that, and then one more bubble brings down the Marowak. This is a super boosted Polyrath, and I'm feeling pretty good. I do switch into Metacham here, and I uh, run into a charge move from the Polyrath. It turns out it is Hydro Pump, so another super aggressive attack, but we guessed it right. He is running Mud Shot, so he's gonna get to those moves really quick, and we have to watch out for that. I'm just gonna try to beat this Polyrath to death with Power Up Punches and Counters. Metacham is still a superior fighter, and those Mud Shots are not doing much. He is gonna fire up another move, which is Hydro Pump, but we survive it. In comes Steelix, and I realize now why he was going all in with that Polyrath. He needs Metacham out of the way. But even after that happens, we still have a healthy Polyrath in the back. I'm actually going to switch into Haunter here to try to piece down this Steelix as much as possible. He does fire off the Crunch, and we don't survive it, but I bring in the Polyrath, and I go for the Power Up Punch here. I thought I may be able to bubble him down, but Power Up Punch will do the trick. In comes that Polyrath, and the only thing that could ruin it for me here is a Hydro Pump. And as it turns out, he doesn't have energy and I'm gonna fire off my power up punch here to win the game. So we are one and oh against season one, Ace Linden Ryu. I switch it up a little bit. I go with Polyrath, Gardevoir, and Metacham. So double fighters again, let's see what happens. He does lead with the Metacham this time, so I bail out immediately into Gardevoir. In comes that Steelix, and Linden plays this matchup a little bit differently than other trainers that I've faced so far in the cup. He is gonna go for that Crunch there, which actually is gonna give me more opportunity to get off a charge move. I do fire off the Shadow Ball here to put some pressure on him, and he does shield it. As you can see, those Dragon Tails do literally nothing to the Gardevoir. What he doesn't know is that I'm not going to shield it, so I do let the second Crunch through I've got double fighters and I have the steel type right in my line of sight. I bring in the Metacham because I know if he has Metacham in the back, I need the extra energy advantage to beat it because it'll allow me to get more psychics off. So I am going to fire off a few more counters here. He's going to think things over and let that switch timer tick down a little bit. In comes his own Metacham and I'm going to fire off the power punch to try to draw the shield. He does not take the bait, guys. I build up a little bit more and I go for another power-up punch here to try to get the shield, and he does not take the bait again. Linden, uh, he's got big cojones, all right? And uh, we actually shield that Psychic from him, which was the right move by us. So we're doing everything right as far as defensively, but again, offensively, he doesn't take the bait. He actually allows the power-up punch through. Our, meta, our uh, Polyrath runs into the Metacham with a Psychic. We're able to use our Ice Punch here against his Polyrath. And the key for me is gonna be bringing in that Metacham, using the Psychic against this Polyrath, and then using counters to beat his Metacham. He actually shields our Power Up Punch, and that's good for us. He is now shieldless. His Polyrath goes for a charge move, which is Dynamic Punch. And look at this, guys. We're getting so close. I am beating that Psychic button, but it doesn't work for us. He gets to the Dynamic Punch first, and he wins the game. 
Jumping into game three, this is for all the Tostitos. I actually go with one fighter this time, Haunter, Gardevoir, and Metacham is my team. I run into that Polyrath, and this is a Mudshot variant, so I need to play this carefully. I do switch into Gardevoir, and then here we go again with Steelix. So Steelix is in here, he's going to do the same thing he did before and actually go for the crunch. I do not take that shield bait, I actually go here straight for the shadow ball as well. So eerily similar to round two, he is going to shield as well. I do fire off a few more charms here to try to whittle down the Steelix. And again, I'm sticking with my guns, I'm not going to shield the Gardevoir. Electing instead to bring in the Metacham here and use these counters. I don't think he's got enough for an Earthquake, but just to be careful and keep my Metacham healthy, I do decide to shield. So it's two pokes versus two pokes, one shield each. In comes that Alola Marowak, and I have to play this matchup very carefully to win. I do fire off the Power Up Punch, he does not take the bait. Switch into Haunter, in comes Polyrath. I go straight for the Dark Pulse, guys, but watch this. He survives. He gets a charge move off, guys, and I shield. I think it's a Hydro Pump, but it's Dynamic Punch. I looked at the Sims later, and that Dynamic Punch only would have done 24 damage. Because I burn my shield, I'm defenseless. The Bone Club destroys me. In comes my Metacham again. I go for the bait one more time to try to boost this Psychic. He doesn't take the bait. I get to the Psychic here, and I know it's all over because he's still got the one shield. Linden shields my Psychic and then goes for the Shadow Ball victory. GG's Linden, I can't wait to face you in the next 10 cups that we have this season. It's going to be awesome. Guys, Ferg won this cup outright. It was a six rounder. He beat everybody in his path. He actually won three other cups this month as well. Sinister is the month of Ferg and he is an incredible battler. I'm going to try to get his cups on the channel as well so you can learn from a true Sinister Master. This guy is a rising star like none other that we've seen in Tampa in a very, very long time, probably ever. If you enjoyed this battle footage, like, comment, and subscribe. I really, really appreciate the views, the comments, and everything else, and stay tuned for more.